This is Twit. I was torn, you remember, about how I should, you know, kind of save and present our pictures. Mm -hmm. So tip number one, I, we, I, I do love Google Photos. You've heard me talk about Google Photos a lot. And the advantage of Google Photos is I was able to make, before we left, I was able to make a Google Photos album, Machu Picchu and the Galapagos, and share it with Lisa. Uh, so, in fact, you can see her there and the kids so that they could upload their images. So this became a shared photo album that everybody's images went into. And then when I got back and I had more bandwidth, this is part of the problem. A lot of times when you're traveling, you have very little bandwidth or sometimes none. And in, in, in the case of the Galapagos, there were plenty of places where I couldn't get online at all. So I had to do everything locally. And then when we got internet access, I was able to upload. So Google Photos is kind of my backup, right? What I do at the end of every day is I, I take my camera, I copy it over to the iPad or your iPhone, and then let the iPhone upload whenever it can get online slowly over time so that you have a backup. I was very cautious with my pictures. I, I, I brought enough memory cards so I didn't have to erase cards as we went. And so uh, every few days I'd swap out a, a memory card and put a new one in and keep this one. So that's the original. That's copy number one. I would also copy it to my laptop, although next time I'll be able to copy it to my iPad. That's copy number two. And then I brought a small external drive and I would sync the external drive every night. So now I have three copies and then my offline copy, my in the cloud copy was Google Photos. But of course, with limited bandwidth, I could only upload it as uh, over time. But that may now I, and then I separate this is crazy, maybe overdone, but I put my I put the external drive in my carry-on and or actually vice versa, put the external drive in my checked luggage while I had the laptop in my carry-on and the camera in my carry so that we had <laughs> I really didn't want to lose any pictures. However, the presentation, I tried something new, and I thought it went very well. On Windows Weekly, Mary Jo Foley, uh, who is also a, a travel buff, um, used something called Microsoft Sway. This is a free uh, iOS app. It's also a Windows app, uh, and you can do it from the web. Uh, kind of, it's, I have mixed feelings about it. It's a presentation program. So uh, Microsoft says Sway is part of Office, can be used... Uh, as a way to make business presentations. But Mary Jo was using it for slideshows on her trip, and they came out really great. So this is Sway. It's free on, on, on the iPad. I think it really is nice to use on the iPad. So when I found a good picture, I would add it to the Sway. And then you can also add text to the Sway. So as you're working, you can add captions. I like doing that because captions um, are a way for me of kind of remembering what this picture meant, what was going on. So here, here we are at the airport, I think at 6 a.m. or very early. And so uh, I also mentioned that we had nine flights in total during this two-week trip. We'd spent a lot of time in airports and airplanes. So uh, I, I, can, I can put that into this way as we go. Now, this isn't what you'll see at home. This is my kind of my work sway. And it's very easy. You see there's a plus sign. If I want to add a picture, I can add it directly from the camera. I can add text. I can add a heading. I can also say how the images are shown. So uh, you can say, let's Sway do it. And that's really kind of what Microsoft wants you to do, which is let's Sway arrange the presentation. That's really what they're, what they're saying about this is, oh, oh, this is something you can do. Uh, you know, without doing any work, you're going to get a great looking presentation. I, I sometimes would take a little more control of it and choose one of these other stacking methods. Uh, you can also, if you add media, it, you add it from, this is from the uh, the um, Apple Photos app, right? So I can add media there. Let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's pick a, cancel out of that and pick a spot to uh, add something. Um, this is, a, by the way, an automatic uh, stack. This is the picture I took with the camera phone. This is my best picture just so you know what Machu Picchu looks like. But again, this isn't what it's going to end up looking like. This is, this is you're working in this, right? This is how you're working in it. You can also, uh, when, you're, when you're looking at a picture like this, you can um, just crop it and you can star it, which will tell it, uh, okay, I want to see that full screen. Otherwise, these will be a little bit smaller. So you have a lot of control over this. Now, what you can do, and this is what I did, is you can share it in a variety of ways. Um, you can send a link to invite others to participate, just like Google Photos. Or you can have a link that other people can look at. And that link can be posted in Facebook, you know, Twitter, Google+. It even has, and this is what I did, 
an embed link. So the embed link is a link that I pasted into my blog uh, so that so that in a, in a frame in my blog so that it is actually in my blog as a presentation. But I said I had mixed feelings about this. My mixed feelings are, on this are you're putting your photos in something. There's no export. There's no way to say take this and make it a movie or a PowerPoint. It's in Sway, and that's the only place it can be. Mm -hmm. And if Microsoft should kill, it's on the Sway servers. It's not on my. It's not local. So if Microsoft should kill Sway, this presentation's gone forever. And you know, I'm not a fan because I've been bit before of putting your pictures anywhere where you don't control it. So. If you use this, this shouldn't be the only way you share your pictures, and you absolutely must keep the original copies of your images. And if and if your text, if you write a lot of text, uh, you might want to save that as well. And you have to do that manually because Microsoft doesn't let you do it. However, it is a great way to share these. Once I embedded it on my blog, it becomes a show. Sway has some uh, features that are nice. You can change the layout, the colors, and the background. You can have it even automatically remix it. If you say, well, I didn't, I don't know if I did a good job, so I'm going to remix it, uh, you can have it do that. This is a different view of it. This is the date timeline view, which I really like, especially for a trip. Less, less useful for a business presentation, but for a trip, it's great because this is June 1st, this is June 7th, or this is day one, June 5th, I put the actual dates in. Um, and, I, and I think that's really nice, too. So here, I'll just show you what it looks like just for a little bit. When somebody goes, and if you want to see the full thing, you can go to leolaporte.com, my blog, or I post it on Facebook also. So you see it's kind of a slideshow with the captions. And if people want to see a picture uh, close up, they can, and then they can close it. Uh, and it's just I think it's just kind of fun. These are not the pictures you liked, though. I know I know what you wanted to see. You wanted <laughs> well, I did. I watched this on Facebook, and I really did like that you had captions. On yeah. Because rather than just looking at some, Ooh, don't look at that. That's explicit. That's but one art, of one of the know. advantages. Well, yeah, this is pre-Columbian art. By the way, we're at a museum in Lima <laughs> called the Museo Larco, and they have a section of the museum that they say is the adult section. Because it turns out the Incas and the Indians before them uh, made, ex why wouldn't they, made explicit right. sculptures. And why what's, wouldn't what's they? great about this picture, and I'll leave it to you if you feel adult enough to look at it. <laughs> they're, Don't they're, say we didn't They're work. anatomically correct. Is that this is actually, these were actually on the bathroom doors. So oh. you know which bathroom <laughs> to go to. And I kind of liked it. There was no question. You knew what bathroom to go to, depending... <laughs> Anyway, I'll scroll past that. Uh, so this is these are the Machu Picchu pictures, and you see this is even though I have this on the iPad, this is all loading from Microsoft's servers. So if the servers are dead, uh, this will stop working. So this is really I wouldn't think of this as a long term proposition. In fact, I'd probably trust Google Photos, and I'll show you what Google Photos album looks like in a second, a little bit more because. My Sway does not seem like a big business for Microsoft. Google Photos is clearly a big business for Google. So, but uh, yeah, you you, you like the, uh, the the animals, Galapagos animals. So let me see if I can get there. And I wrote a little like travel log on you know each island because we visited uh, something like eight islands. There's hundreds of islands in the Galapagos. So I I wrote a little bit of you know what island we're on and and what kind of animals you'll see on the island. You like the animals. I did. I didn't take this picture so I can show it and, and, and sing its praises. I lent my camera to one of our guides and he said, oh, good. And then he went out in a Zodiac, one of those little rubber boats, oh. and took pictures of penguins. The Galapagos are weird. These penguins are Antarctic penguins that somehow got transported on the ocean currents to the equator where it's very hot for them. It's too hot for them. Uh, so they don't thrive here. But they survive because there's one current, the Humboldt Current, which comes from the Antarctic, where the water's really cold. There's a strange place because some, in some places the water's warm, equatorial warm, and some places it's freezing cold. So uh, What's that? That's a rock <laughs> called the bishop. Can you tell why it's called the bishop? Oh, the hat? Yeah, he's a bishop. Look yeah. at his face. He's a oh. grumpy bishop reading a book, they say, or praying. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's just an eroded. Is uh, the Galapagos? These are our guides. They were wonderful. It, it's a Galapagos is a uh, eroded. Uh, it's all lava. They're all volcanic islands. Kind of like Hawaii. Um, so, which animals did do you like the best? You like the sea turtles? Uh, that I liked the sea turtles. But and are those seals? 
Are there yeah, and you sea? know what? They're California sea lions. <laughs> sea lions. They came down from California coast. There's also currents that go in that direction. It's a very strange thing. We went whale watching uh, one day. These are the little rubber boats you go out. Those are beautiful. So did you edit that? photo yeah and i'll show you a little okay. bit about how i did that because this is you're gonna you're gonna want to do something with your pictures if not crop like for instance i i probably straightened the horizon on this wow. because i'm in a bouncy boat and the and and they're and and it's you have to move fast it's a whale over there and this whale is up for one second so i had to move very quickly and uh, probably i'm guessing it was uh it was a little bit uh at an angle there's one of the sea lions he was swimming next to the boat so i didn't have to isn't he pretty? Yeah. Yeah, they were really gorgeous. Uh, but I know what you really like the best, I'm guessing, is the, well, well you got to like the iguanas, right? I did right? like the iguanas. But I'm thinking you like the giant tortoises. Mm-hmm. Because they're really amazing. They're what the Galapagos is known for. In fact, they're what it's named for. Galapagos is a Spanish word uh, meaning saddle, and it's, it's the word based on the uh, saddle shells of some of the tortoises. So here's here's a oh. here's a giant tortoise just for you. Thank you. But they weigh hundreds of pounds, and they move very slowly. They're very prehistoric looking. <laughs> here's a picture of me. That's the camera, <laughs> and this tortoise. I didn't get this picture because the tortoise was walking right walked right up to me, and this lens was way too long. So I just kind of <laughs> I said and I asked my guide, "What should I do? You're not supposed to get within six feet of the animals. What should I do?" She said, "Don't move." <laughs> The tortoise just kind of trundled right what by me. What was she afraid would happen if you moved? That it would attack you? No. Slowly? Just don't mess with oh. the, Don't mess with the tortoises. I don't know why he has a toothpick hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> They're kind of messy eaters. Uh, they also like mud. So that was a lot of fun. Anyway, you're right. You don't... And there's This to give you a sense of the size. That's Lisa, who is a normal-sized human. And that <laughs> is the giant tortoise. And that's how big they get. They're really beautiful creatures. It's fun. The Galapagos is fun, and it's a photographer's dream. So what was my routine, as I mentioned? Now, normally, uh, so what I did is I brought a laptop with me, and I was using Lightroom. But I'm thinking next time, uh, what I can do is get the pictures in. Now, I wanted to show you, almost all cameras now have an app that makes it easy to get the pictures in. In this case, um, this is a Panasonic, so you can use the, the Panasonic Image app. I was using a Canon, and you can. Uh, I'd have to turn on the. Uh, let me turn on the camera's um, Wi-Fi here. And so most cameras nowadays have, believe it or not, have Wi-Fi. And uh, so I'm going to send. You can use it to control the camera, but in this case, send images stored on the camera to a smartphone. And I'm going to connect, and suddenly it'll say, "Oh, I see the camera." And now you can very quickly, because it's Wi-Fi, this becomes a Wi-Fi access point, and you can very quickly copy the pictures from the camera over. So now they're in your, uh, depending on the app, sometimes they're in only the app, sometimes they're are immediately copied to uh, Apple's Photos app. But once they're in the Photos app, then there's a variety of ways to, uh, to edit it. And I, as you can see, brought a, quite a few apps with me. I'm a Lightroom fan. And Lightroom on the iPad is very interesting because uh, Lightroom now as it stands on the iPad, is really, this is like a sidecar to Adobe's Lightroom on the desktop computer. But Adobe has said one of the things they really want to do is make Lightroom on the iPad every bit as powerful as Lightroom on the desktop. You can crop and straighten. So you can, you know, do that. There are some preset effects. And this is actually, this is, getting pretty sophisticated you know I can make this a black and white photo if I want or I can say I want to make this a little cooler or maybe a little bit warmer and and they also add detail which I frequently would uh, would, would add detail you want to enhance the clarity of your images um, maybe reduce the noise if it's a grainy image maybe not uh, let's go back to that high clarity that look that looks pretty good doesn't it except it's kind of popped this rock so I might want to reduce the brightness a little bit. You can vignette. So there's a lot of the a lot of the editing stuff that you might do on a desktop version of Lightroom. Uh, you can do here, and they even give you uh, quite a quite a bit of more elaborate controls. But a lot of people use uh, Lightroom on the iPad as just simply a way of marking photos. Like 
uh, as you're going through your photos, oh yeah, let's 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 keep that one, and you can and you can double click it and say I want to, or you can also do this, which is check the focus and so forth, and you can make it a pick or not, and so a lot, and then what happens is when you get home, uh, this will have, or you get back to your your hotel room, this will sync the picked picks with Lightroom on the desktop, and then you could do if you need it the more elaborate editing. I think this, by the way, is free. And doesn't require an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription to use, but if you want it to synchronize with Lightroom on the desktop, then you do have to have a subscription to Adobe's Creative Cloud. I actually do the $10 a month subscription, which gives you Lightroom and Photoshop, and those are really the tools that any photographer needs. This is a sea iguana crawling out of the ocean, which is kind of amazing because this is the only place in the world where iguanas go swim. Uh, they're not very good swimmers. They're, they only can use their tail to swim. What they do is they they dive very deep. They eat the seaweed, but the problem is they can't digest the seaweed. So when they when they once they eat the seaweed, fill their belly. Look how full that guy's belly is. They go out in the rocks and they cook it inside their oh, tummy. Oh goodness! So that they can eat it. So they're so when you when there's these guys are lying all over the place. They're not social animals, by the way. But when they look how look don't they look like prehistoric creatures? Isn't that amazing? Uh, so when you when you look, there are just tons of them lying. I have to see if I can find a picture of it, but lying uh, all together, I guess not, uh, on a rock. And periodically, as it's cooking, by the way, they've ingested a considerable amount of salt water. And as with most creatures, they can't digest the salt water. So as it's cooking, every once in a while, they'll spew salt water out of their nose, <laughs> like little steaming pots. I think that's how we should all do Thanksgiving, just raw turkey. And, a lot of salt water and, and lie in the sun lay in the sun and yeah. bake it inside <laughs> us. so uh, i think lightroom is a really and i think by the time i go on vacation next in a few months adobe will have updated this to work even better with the new ipad pro and probably will be a very good photo i, I think as good a photo editor uh as it is uh on the desktop so that's pretty exciting